Ruth McPherson, a very warm welcome to the Singing Teachers Talk podcast. How are you? I'm really well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. Thank you for joining us. I know that you've just moved house. So how is the new pad? It's great. Yeah, it's lovely to finally be in. It feels like it's been a long time coming, uh, but we're very happy. And my cat is loving it because she's got more space to run around. (laughs) Can you explain what the Independent Society of Musicians is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, We are a professional body for musicians and we're also a subject association for music. Um, So we're a membership organisation and we work to promote music and support music professionals. Um, And so music professionals means anyone who's working in the music sector, whether you're a teacher, performer, composer, songwriter, or if you're a music administrator or producer, sound uh, technician, anyone working in the sector um, as a professional. And the ISM dates back to what, what I think is one of the most fascinating historical periods emerging during the Victorian era in 1882. So can you explain how it came to be and why it was set up in the first place all those years ago? My uh, history is not my strong point, but I do know a little bit about the ISM's history because it is, as you say, a really interesting time. Um, and at that period during the kind of late 1800s, Um, workers were kind of beginning to find their collective voice. There were a lot of active political movements happening at the time and a lot of kind of social reform taking place uh, in the 19th century. And this sort of touched the music sector as well. And it's interesting because musicians at the time were largely gigging freelance. They were not often employed, which is sort of the same as it still is today. And because they were this kind of gigging freelance community, they were looking for a professional body uh, or there was this desire for a professional body to look after their interests. Um, And so the ISM uh, was set up as the Incorporated Society of Musicians in 1882 in Manchester. And we've got an amazing archive at the ISM and there's some really lovely photos showing members gathering together at annual dinners, um, beautifully dressed, you know, with ladies, lovely hats and so on. Um, and it, yeah, interestingly enough, we were one of the first organisations to allow women to join as full members. And that kind of um, trend of gender diversity has kind of uh, gone throughout the ISM's history. Um, and we've always had a, a very, we've always been very strong in terms of the number of women. Uh, we had a female president back in 1949. Um, and the current membership has a split, a gender split of around 60% women, 40% men. And uh, we're really proud that we still have um, great gender equality at board level and in the staff team as well. The ISM has celebrated what, 140 years now of supporting and, and campaigning for musicians. So in this day and age, what are the things that you are now fighting for compared to way back when it started? Well, I mean, inter- interestingly enough, it's kind of the same issues. It's those issues around getting paid, finding work, uh, protecting yourself in what can be um, you know, a difficult sector to work in, particularly when you often are a freelancer, you're self-employed. Um, and it's also about getting respect as a musician and status. And that sort of issue around the value of music remains the same today. Um, and interestingly enough as well, the ISM uh, has campaigned on music education since the very beginning of the organisation. And we actually took a private member's bill back in around 1912, around the regulation of private tuition, um, because we were concerned about standards. Um, so right from the start, um, you know, music education has been at our core, as well as performing and composing. And that, I think, makes ISM a powerful organisation because we have that diversity of members um, from across the sector. So, yeah, it is interesting to think that some of these issues we're still fighting against today. Um, you know, they were fighting against back in the day, back in 1882. So what continues to be the ISM's mission and core values? Well, since we were set up, we've always been dedicated to promoting the importance of music and supporting those working in the music profession. So our mission remains the same. Um, in terms of values, um, it's uh, very we're very proud of our independence and we changed our name last year on our 140th anniversary from the Incorporated Society of Musicians to the Independent Society of Musicians. We kept that ISM, but we are really proud of our political and financial independence, which allows us to campaign and lobby on behalf of our members without any kind of external pressures. Uh, We're also very customer focused, so gold standard service and musicians are at the heart of everything that we do. 
Um, and we also um, aim to be incredibly inclusive and open to everyone working in the sector, but also to prevent discrimination and harassment, because we know that's an issue that affects a lot of musicians. The ISM have got lots of different membership options. I'm a member of the ISM. Can you tell us about the different memberships and who would be eligible for them? In terms of individual members, so working music professionals, uh, we have three uh, main tiers of membership. So full membership, uh, if you're working, if you've been working in the music sector for more than 10 years, uh, and then we've got early career membership for those who've been working in the sector for less than 10 years, and that's a, a heavily discounted rate um, with 70% off the membership rate for those early career musicians. Uh, and then we have student membership for those who are either studying a music degree or are studying a non-music degree but are actively involved in music. And again, that's a heavily discounted membership um, with 90% off the, the full rate. And then as well as those individual grades of membership, we've also got Friends of the ISM Trust, which is our sister charity, which I think we're going to talk about a bit more uh, in a bit. And the, the ISM Trust Friends are supporters of our work not necessarily people who are music professionals themselves, although they might be those who have left the profession or retired and still want to support our work, but they might also be music lovers and people who are interested in music um, and want to support musicians. And then we've got corporate members who are organisations who work in the music sector um, to support musicians and they can join the ISM as a corporate member um, and stay involved in our work and stay up to date with um, everything that we're doing in terms of campaigns and professional development. Is there a criteria other than, you know, you need to be working in the sector for 10 years or under 10 years? Is there any other criteria that we'd need to fit to become a member of any of, of, of these things that you can offer? In terms of individual membership, uh, the, the main criteria is that you're working at a professional level in the sector and we're quite open in terms of how we kind of or how you describe that so either it can be a music qualification or um, you can just write us some information about what you do in the sector and send it through to us and um, our membership team will take a look at it but basically if you're working at a professional level in music um, you're very welcome to join the ISM and as I said if you're a student you can join whether you're studying a music related course or you're studying a non music related course, but you're actively involved in music. So what are the benefits of becoming a member? What what do we get? So there are lots of benefits. It's a really holistic package um, and it aims to sort of support you in your career from all angles. So it's a kind of 360 um, package of support. And it includes things like legal advice. That's a really key part of the ISM membership offering. So we have an in-house legal team who offer bespoke legal support. Um, you can contact our legal team at any time um, and they can help you with anything related to your career in music, whether it's contracts, copyright, uh, employment issues, etc. And we also have an, a legal helpline if you need, if you have any legal questions not related to your work in music. So it might be things about um, housing or um, anything non-music related. Then we offer lots of insurances. So they're part of your package of memberships. That's things like public liability insurance, which you need if you're doing any performing or teaching, up to 10 million pounds of cover. Um, we also offer a DBS checking service. So if you're self-employed, um, you can get your DBS check through the ISM. Um, and if you're in Northern Ireland, we also offer the Access NI service or the PVG service in Scotland. We can offer unpaid fees recovery. So that's if you um, haven't been paid for a gig or um, a, a pupil hasn't paid you for a music lesson. We can chase those fees on your behalf. And it usually helps to have that bit of headed paper from the ISM um, asking for the fees to be paid. And it tends to come through quite quickly, which can be helpful. We also have lots of advice and resources on our website across a huge range of topics um, from sort of business advice and legal and tax advice um, through to things like health and well-being. Um, we have a tax helpline you can call and various tax support services. Um, and we also offer discounts to save you money um, on both music related products and services, but also on more of the kind of lifestyle discounts of so things like shopping and days out, um, kind of health and well-being discounts, etc. Um, and then on the health and well-being front, we, through the Members Fund, which is one of our sister charities, we offer three really key services to support musicians' health and well-being. So they are 
um, counselling and advice. So we have a counselling helpline and you can access structured counselling for free as an ISM member. Also free physiotherapy um, sessions and that's both face-to-face -face or telephone physio, whichever you need and prefer. And then hearing health support as well. So we're really proud that we've just joined the Musicians Hearing Health Scheme. Um, so ISM members can now access heavily discounted uh, audiology assessments and bespoke hearing protection, which is really important for musicians to protect their hearing. And then finally, community and networking benefits as well. So we have an active Facebook group. Um, we have our member connect service, so you can contact other members. We've got our music directory, so you can promote yourself to uh, potential pupils or uh, people looking for musicians to perform. Um, so there's lots of community and networking benefits as well. And we also put on events so you can come along and meet other members and meet the ISM team. So yes, it's a big package of benefits that aims to kind of be here for you when you need us. But also you can contact us at any time with any questions that you might have as a member. And a lot of our staff team are musicians themselves. Um, I'm a harpist, for example, um, and a, a singer, very amateur singer. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that in this kind of company. Um, but uh Yes, a lot of us are musicians, so we can help. And, um, you know, if we can't help, we can signpost you to someone who can. But generally, we can support um, in every way we can. Brilliant. And I love that stuff about hearing. We spoke with uh, fellow teacher Carrie Birmingham on our podcast about how we can protect our hearing as as teachers and musicians. Um, remember being in a tap room um, for musical theatre and dance. My goodness, that's loud. <laughs> I really felt the ringing afterwards. So, yeah, it's really important. And you also mentioned business there. Um, and I know for myself anyway, like anything to do with like writing policies or um, privacy policies, anything like that. I I struggle with what to, to write. Is there anything that ISM offers that or can point us in the direction of where to go with how to do those sort of things? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's kind of part of our legal and business offering so in terms of um, privacy policies we offer um, a privacy policy template that you can use um, and that takes into account the changes that happened due to GDPR back in 2018 um, and we also have other templates that might be useful such as template contracts uh, we've got a budgeting calculator that's kind of specifically designed for musicians um, and template invoices as well. So there's lots of sort of business related documents that you can access as a member um, and download and adapt to your own purposes. I know through the likes of Musicians Union, they stipulate a particular charge that they would advise solo coaches, private tuition to be charging their customers. Do you also do something similar? Yes, absolutely. We do an annual uh, fees survey, which covers um, fees for music teachers, both private and peripatetic um, visiting music teachers and accompanists and examiners. And that survey looks at how much people are charging and things like room rates as well. And we publish the results every year. So we've actually just published our latest 2023 fees survey results. Um, so perhaps we can pop a link um, in the show notes to that so you can take a look if you're interested to look at what other people are charging in your area because it does break down the fees in terms of area as well as uh, type of musician. What's the cost of being a member? So because we've got those different membership grades, we have different costs depending on which stage of your career that you're at. Um, so if you're a student, um, it's, our membership starts from just £17 a year. Um, so that's 90% off the full rate. Um, for those who are at the beginning of their careers, if you're an early career musician within the first 10 years um, of working in music, uh, £52 a year, or that works out as £5.20 a month over 10 months. And then if you're a full member, so someone who's been working in music for more than 10 years, it's £183 a year or £18.30 a month over 10 months. You mentioned that you also run events. So what sort of educational or networking events are available for us to, to come along to? Yeah, we actually had um, a really fantastic event recently called the Empowered Musician. And it was the third iteration of our Empowered Musician event. Um, and that was a conference where musicians came together um, to network and meet each other and find out about um, services available to them as musicians, but also to talk about some of the key issues 
in music at the moment. So we had a session on emerging technologies like AI, NFTs uh, and 5G and how that's affecting music. And then we also had a resilience session on mental, um, physical and financial well-being. So we do those kind of networking events that offer uh, opportunities for networking, but also look at sort of topical issues in the music sector and help musicians to understand um, and sort of explore these topics in more detail. What happened at the event in terms of the AI? Because since I came across ChatGPT, I'm I'm both very interested and also horrified <laughs> at what might be coming, especially for like writers. Yeah, it was an interesting discussion. And I think, you know, there are both opportunities and threats when it comes to AI that seems to be um, becoming increasingly clear. I think the main threat for musicians is that issue of copyright. And, you know, we need to ensure that there's proper legislation in place to prevent uh, musicians' copyright being infringed. And that's something that the ISM will be looking at closely. Um, but there are also opportunities out there and there's, you know, musicians are being incredibly creative with AI. Um, so it's it's a fast moving area um, and it's difficult to say at the moment. I don't think anybody, you know, can uh, can say whether it's going to be totally positive or totally negative yet. Um, and it's probably not going to be either of those things. I think there's somewhere grey in between. There are lots of interesting things happening with music and AI. And I'd recommend that everyone um, take a look at that session at the Empowered Musician, which is available to watch back for free um, because it was a, yeah, a really interesting discussion. Again, perhaps I can put the link in the show notes for you um, so you can have a look at that. Amazing, thank you. And out of the 11,000 members that you have, how many of those are actually singers and singing teachers or vocal coaches? Yeah, well, we have approximately 1,500 singers and singing teachers in the ISM membership. And yeah, we have lots of educators in the membership, um, but also performing singers as well. So it's a real mixture. Lots of opera singers, particularly. Um, so Nikki Spence is our president-elect, uh, and we're really looking forward to having him as president. Is there a particular musician or instrument that is more common in your membership? The most common instruments are probably um, voice and piano, um, but we have a very diverse membership and I think a lot of our members have portfolio careers, so they maybe wear different hats and, you know, do some performing, a bit of teaching um, or do some composition and maybe a bit of teaching as well. So yes, it's a very diverse membership and uh, we have all sorts of instruments in there um, from the kind of uh, very unusual um, through to those more common instruments like voice, piano, guitar, etc. One of the ISM's campaigns is save our subjects and also back for the future actually, which are focused on bringing value to and saving the art subjects in schools. Where are we at with this and, and do you see a future where music, drama and art are actually no longer staples to our curriculum? Well, we certainly do not want to see that future. And this is something we've been campaigning on for a long time. Uh, and the ISM wholeheartedly believes that children and young people deserve to be taught a broad and ba balanced curriculum that gives them the skills for the 21st century workplace. And that includes creative skills. Um, and it, it's important to note when we're talking about this that although music and drama and art are all creative subjects, um, there are some differences because music, art and design are curriculum subjects, whereas drama isn't. So that is important to remember. Um, and I think there are real reasons to be concerned for the future of the creative subjects, particularly because music, music GCSE entries have fallen by 27% since 2010. And we've also seen a decline in A-level music entries as well. So we founded the Save Our Subjects campaign uh, with the EDGE Foundation, and that campaign has really struck a chord and has gained support from over 740 organisations. And that includes major education unions like um, NASUWT and the NEU, as well as think tanks and creative companies. And we feel that if the government and the Chancellor really want the creative industries to be a growth sector, which they have said, then we need more creative subjects in our schools. And a good place for them to start is our Save Our Subjects recommendations. Um, and I'll, I'll read them out if, um, if that's okay. <laughs> uh, so we've asked government to review the impact of accountability measures. So that's the EBAC and Progress 8 in arts and technology subjects to reform the Progress 8 accountability measure 
and to commit to the arts premium, which was which was promised in the Conservatives' 2019 general election manifesto. Um, and if people want to find out more about the campaign um, and get involved, the URL to go to is saveoursubjects.org, and we'd love for you to get involved. Amazing. We'll also pop that in the show notes as well, so you can just click away and follow follow that link. Can you tell us about the ISM Trust and the ISM Members Fund, which are your sister charities, and what goes on there? What are you producing? Absolutely. Yeah, this is a subject that's close to my heart because I'm head of charity development at the ISM, so I look after the two sister charities. Um, so the ISM Members Fund was also founded a very long time ago, back in uh, 1917. It was founded after the First World War and actually came out of um, the First World War because uh, the members of the ISM wanted to look after uh, those members who had died during the war and had left family behind. They wanted to ensure that their families were looked after. So it was a benevolent fund um, and more recently it was um, kind of refreshed and uh, had a bit of a, a kind of overhaul to focus on health and well-being benefits. So really to focus on prevention um, of injury and illness in terms of um, the musician community. So we offer three core services through the ISM Members Fund, um, which is our counselling advice service, our physiotherapy service and our um, hearing service through the Musicians Hearing Health Scheme. Um, and we also offer financial uh, support in terms of financial advice through the Members Fund as well. And then the ISM Trust uh, is a much younger charity created in 2014. And it's kind of our corporate social responsibility arm. So it's our way of giving back to the sector and supporting music professionals um, with professional development. Um, so the Trust offers events, training and award-winning resources um, and a lot of the Trust's output is free uh, to access regardless of whether you're an ISM member or not and it produces things like webinars and um, covering key topics from legal and business, copyright, finance, music teaching, diversity and inclusion, um, health and well-being. And it also um, produces projects in partnership with leading charities and organisations. So, for an example, we recently produced a new digital resource with the Voices Foundation um, called the Primary Singing Toolkit. So that's a free digital resource for primary music teachers to help them discover practical singing strategies to enhance their music curriculum and kind of feel empowered to share that joy of singing with their students. So the trust really focuses on free professional development because we know that being a musician can be financially challenging. So we try and offer as much for free um, to support as many musicians as we can. And what's coming up in those charities that you can tell us about in the coming months and maybe years ahead? In the trust, we've got a couple of webinars coming up, which um, your listeners might be interested in. Um, one is on safeguarding on the 22nd of June. Um, so that is about safeguarding for musicians who work with children or with vulnerable adults. And it will be led by our director of legal services. Uh, and then on the 11th of July, we have another free webinar on music production, um, which will be hosted by Zylo Aria from Music Production for Women. And it's really um, a kind of taster session um, for anyone who is interested in learning about music production or who is already producing but wants to kind of explore that a little bit more. So those are two events that are coming up. Um, and in terms of the fund, we've just... Uh, become a partner in the Musicians Hearing Health Scheme. So we're really keen to raise awareness um, of the scheme and kind of encourage more musicians uh, to think about their hearing health. And we've got an advice page um, on hearing health as well. So we'd really encourage everyone to take a look at that. And if you're an ISM member to access that discounted hearing support. Do you think there'll be anything in the future through ISM where a singer could get some financial support for things like vocal massage or help to finance um, a scope, for example? There may be in the future. At the moment, we don't offer uh, funding for those kind of um, health needs. But what I would say is the best place to go would be the British Association of Performing Arts Men Medicine, BAPAM. Um, because I know that they offer specialist health support to arts professionals um, and also the Royal Society of Musicians. 
can sometimes help with funding um, for health issues like that. So um, yes, I would recommend getting in touch with either BAPAM or the Royal Society of Musicians. So what's coming up for ISM other than the webinars? What can we look out for? What campaigns, what are you going to be going in and fighting for in government? Yeah, I think our campaigns, um, the key campaigns at the moment really are focused on music education, so save our subjects, and um, also discrimination and harassment in the music sector is something that we um, care deeply about and have produced two uh, reports on in terms of dignity at work. Um, so we will be continuing to campaign on that. And our chief executive recently uh, spoke to the Equalities Committee about that. And then Brexit as well continues to be a tricky issue for musicians. And we are um, hoping to launch our next iteration of our Brexit survey. So a new Brexit report, which will help us to share the voices of musicians in terms of how they're finding touring in the EU post Brexit, because we know there's still a lot of red tape and difficulty, difficulties in terms of musicians accessing the EU and also EU musicians coming to the UK. Um, it's a, a lot more complicated than it was pre Brexit. So uh, we're trying to reflect those difficulties and um, hopefully ease some of those issues for musicians by lobbying on musicians behalf in terms of um, Brexit. Well, thank you so much, Ruth. It's been great to be in your company today. Where can our listeners find out more about the Independent Society of Musicians and maybe become a member? Our website is easy to remember. It's ism.org. Um, and we're also on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn and Facebook. So feel free to follow us on socials. Uh, and we have a newsletter as well, which is free to sign up to for non-members. Uh, if you want to hear about what we're doing and upcoming events and professional development, uh, and if you're interested in joining the, joining the ISM, feel free to check out our website or give us a, a call or an email. Our membership team are always happy to um, answer questions and talk to musicians. Um, so you can contact them at membership at ism.org. And it's been a real pleasure. Thanks so much for joining me. Not at all. It's been lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Ooh.